In last week's video, we covered the run expectancy matrix as it applies to the bunt across all levels of play. I got some awesome feedback from you guys asking me to break down how run expectancy can be used to make better decisions on the base paths as well. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. When should you steal in order to optimize your chances of scoring runs, and how can this data help you make those decisions? All that and more covered in today's video. Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. So first and foremost, we are going to cover what run expectancy is. Since we just covered this same topic in the last video, we're going to breeze through it a little quicker this time. If you want a more in-depth description of what this all is, check out last week's video. Links as always in the description down below. So for those of you not familiar with the run expectancy matrix, basically it is a table that identifies all 24 outs in runner position scenarios and it puts a value to how many runs you can be expected to score if you happen upon any of these situations in an inning. This is helpful because it leads you towards when you may want to bunt or when to attempt to steal to better your chances of maximizing runs. We will get into that in a minute though. Today, we will be looking at it through the lens of stealing bases. And it's important to note that since the days of the 80s, when numerous players were nearing the 100 mark on stolen bags throughout the year, we have begun to see a dramatic decrease in the number of stolen base attempts. But on the other side of that coin, we have also seen a large increase in the rate that stolen base attempts have been successful. My reasoning for that is at the end of the video, so be sure to stick around. As a hint, it definitely has something to do with this chart over here. We will go into more in-depth examples here shortly, but to give you newcomers an idea on how this chart works, imagine you have a runner on first base with no outs. You are expected to score about .8 runs that inning. Now, if you successfully steal a base, the average number of runs you are anticipated to score hops just over one, and that's awesome. But what if your attempt isn't successful? Well, it could end up hurting your chances of scoring a run that inning, which makes logical sense, right? But with these historical numbers, we can then define when attempting to steal a base is worthwhile compared to times when it may not be worth the risk. Let's take a look. So starting with our previous example, let's imagine a player on first base with no outs. Like we said, if that player is able to steal second base without being thrown out, then we increase our chances of scoring a run. However, if he's thrown out, we worsen our chances significantly. In the next few minutes then, we will dive deeper into what makes stealing bases worthwhile. Because there is quite the difference between your odds of scoring a run with no one out and a runner on second, and one out and no runners on. And the first and default answer to that question is an unsatisfactory it depends. But don't worry, we're not going to stop there. It depends on who you have on first base, obviously. But before we had this data, anyone could assume that the chance of a runner scoring from second was significantly larger than a runner scoring from first, no matter what the risk was of getting them there. With this data, we are actually able to set the bar of how successful a runner needs to be at stealing bases in order for us to take that risk. At the MLB level, we are able to use the vast amount of past data to help us draw this conclusion. I'll get into how you can do this where you're at too, even if you don't have that kind of information available. Our number for how successful a major league base stealer needs to be over his career for him to steal in this particular situation is 71%. That's right, if he can swipe 7 out of 10 bags, then he should go in this situation, every time. And that number fluctuates up and down based on the other situations we encounter. The higher this number is, the less amount of times you should expect to steal in each of these situations. For example, this number goes down for runners on first and second with no outs, and it goes up for runners on first and third with two outs. You've probably already seen this by watching baseball before. Let's take a look at another example here, with the runners at first and third and one out. The minimum successful stolen base percentage you need to advance the runner on first to second base would be 78%. In other words, you need to be sure that this runner can swipe that bag three out of four times. If the runner is successful, congrats you're more likely to score more runs that inning. If he's not, you've significantly lowered your chances at scoring even a single run that inning. That's how important it is to make sure that you're confident in the guy who's stealing that base. Hopefully that example gives you a better idea of why we saw an increase in the successful stolen base percentage. Because in this scenario, it's much more risky to take that bag than it is to stay put. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't ever do it. So what do these percentages look like in all of the other common base stealing scenarios? Well. 
thanks to a blog post by Jonathan Ashbrock. We have all of those answers. Of course, links to that post are in the description down below. Jonathan laid out exactly what certainty you need to have in your player's ability to reach the next base, and if you're confident in their ability, then you should go every time. The higher the number here, the less often you should steal, because there are less and less players who you should feel confident successfully stealing a bag up to 80% of the time. But let's circle back to our original question. When is stealing worth it? Well, in all of the scenarios I've circled here, you should send runners who you feel confident stealing about 7 out of 10 bags each time you're in any of these situations. And if you don't think they can hit that rate, then you shouldn't ever send them. So this is all great to know, how the best of the best are doing it. And like I said in the beginning, stolen bases are occurring less and less each year, but at the same time, the success rate of stolen bases has never been higher. And that's because all of this new information like our run expectancy matrix. More often, faster players who are capable of consistently stealing bags are doing so in the right situations. And at the same time, the slower players who haven't seen as much success are just being told to never steal. Because the odds are, the outcome will negatively impact the team's ability to score runs compared to them just being moved by the hitters behind them in the lineup. But not all of us have decades worth of past data to help us make these kinds of decisions. So, an example of the way this can be used to help your team out, at any level, is to take into account the amount of time it takes for the pitcher to deliver a ball to home plate, in addition to the amount of time it takes the catcher to fire that pitch all the way back down to second base. That will give you a single number. If you take your base runners out to the diamond and have them get their leads and take off like they're stealing second base, the players who make it under that time, at least 7 out of 10 times, become your base stealers. Simple as that. The stolen base isn't going away. We've still seen individual players stealing nearly 70 bags in the past 5 years, but we can say that in using this data, you can put your team in a better position to win more often using tools like RE24 to help you make your decisions. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.